Welcome to the WRL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. Last week, an assault rifle was smuggled into Millbrook High School in Raleigh. It's one of the latest high-profile gun incidents in North Carolina schools. And it's why education leaders are trying to figure out ways to beef up security. WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorse spoke with several security experts to find out what works and what doesn't work when it comes to keeping guns out of schools. Emily, welcome back. Good to be here. Student safety isn't a new thing. We've always wanted to keep guns out of schools. Why is there such a focus on this now? What's changed? So we've seen a lot of reports lately across North Carolina of a, a gun being found at school, some kind of weapon being found at school. And so there have been a lot of concerns about, you know, why was this weapon found? Is, you know, um, is there a growing problem? How do I keep my kids safe? And, and there are, people have a lot of concerns. So people are probably wondering, is this a growing problem? First of all, is that something we can measure? And it seems like we hear about this more and more and more. Why is that? So we don't go through students' backpacks every day to really have a an understanding of how many guns have ever truly been on a school's campus. So we've seen an increase in reports. There's also been an increase in um, the use of anonymous tip lines. So as those expand across the state, it may be that we also see more reports of these weapons being found when somebody reports, hey, I heard this kid had this weapon. They report that, administration look into it, and they find a weapon. Um, in some ways, it's an example of the system working as well. But it's very frightening to wonder if we're actually seeing more weapons on campus. It's kind of a difficult question to answer, knowing that we haven't had a history of going through every backpack before. Whenever there's a high profile gun incident, the, the first thing that comes to, I think, a lot of parents' minds is metal detectors. I mean, it seems logical. But some experts you spoke with say that alone might not be the answer. So I spoke with several experts, and none of them recommended metal detectors. Uh, they all cautioned about their use because they're so expensive and because some other things might be more proven to work and might be, in a school's estimation, a better use of their funding. Um, so we've heard you know, that anonymous tip lines are very useful, for example. But as far as metal detectors go, um, you know, they don't necessarily catch every weapon, um, especially the artificially artificial intelligence powered metal detectors, because they're kind of scanning for different types of metal and trying to distinguish between what's a cell phone, what's a gun and things like that. And so sometimes that technology misses things or incorrectly identifies it. So that type of technology doesn't necessarily catch everything. And uh, we've also heard, um, you know, with traditional metal detectors, they might be better at detecting that metal, but they can also create really long security lines. And a lot of the people staffing those metal detectors might just be teachers, existing staff, pulled away from their other duties to do that in the morning that might create long lines. And then there's also a concern that if somebody really does want to carry out a mass shooting event, that they might not really care that there's a metal detector at the front of the school. There have been incidents in other states where people just went right on through the metal detectors. You know, some might say, well, you know, since 9-11, airports have figured this out. You know, wh- why can't schools? So there's a lot of evidence to suggest airports haven't figured it out. Um, you know, within the last several years, there have been multiple government investigations into the Transportation Security Administration and have found that when uh, employees put, you know, fake weapons what, or mock weapons, so to speak, in luggage, and went through security, they were actually able to get those weapons through most of the time. So um, TSA uh, is interested in updating some of their technology. Things can improve as far as that technology goes, but at least when it comes to the TSA, um, which is similar to schools because you know they're examining entire bags of materials, um, they haven't had it figured out. Can all school systems afford these kinds of devices if they decide to go uh, that route? So there are a lot of grants out there. Um, You could apply for a grant and perhaps receive one that is large enough for you to invest in that technology. 
that may depend on the size of your school system and the amount of money a group is willing to provide to that size of a school system. Um, There are grants at the state level for security, um, but otherwise that might be something you need to build into your annual budget. So in North Carolina, you'd have to ask county commissioners, um, you know, we want to spend 10 million or more millions of dollars on a particular upgrade. That's up to the commissioners. And, um, you know, so that's something that maybe needs a little bit of planning before a school system can just go out there and execute a contract. Okay, so we've established that metal detectors are expensive. We know that they're not exactly foolproof. What are some other ways that school systems can boost their security? So there are several things that school systems and even others can do. Um, So anonymous tip lines are important for people feeling comfortable talking about suspicious behavior they've noticed. Also training people to recognize that suspicious behavior is really critical. Um, You know, the what we know about people who do mass shootings is they often display that concerning behavior or they tell somebody about their plans. I mean, that is true almost every time is that they do that. So if you have a system where people feel comfortable reporting that concerning behavior or even feel uh, have an easier time recognizing that concerning behavior, then you can put that into the system and they can more proactively prevent an event versus responding basically at the moment a shooter enters a school. So that's that's those two are very um, big and important things. We also know that shooters often have experienced bullying um, or mental health challenges. So if you can address bullying, if you can prevent bullying, if you can help create better relationships between students, if you can uh, have lessons in school that kind of teach people how to handle some of their emotions and teach people positive behaviors, that can help. Really, in the end, um, we're talking about a combination of several different things can all help make schools safer. There's not one thing, well, if we just addressed this, we would solve this problem. It really has to be a combination of factors. So some parents and administrators, they also say that keeping guns out of schools, that effort starts at home, right? Yes, we've heard that a lot. The last few Wake County School Board meetings have featured board members reminding people to store their guns at home safely. Uh, We do know that a lot of the weapons that are used uh, at schools have come from inside their home or from a, a friend's house. You know, it's coming from adults who had the ability to purchase those weapons and kids who had access to those weapons. So recommendations to safely store your guns are are a big thing. Security experts recommend all parents do that and because they may not know that their children might know where that gun is stored. You should always act as though they do know where it's stored. Well, let's take a quick break. Uh, When we come back, we'll talk about how one North Carolina school system is keeping guns out of its hallways. Stick around. Welcome back to the WRL Daily Download. We're talking with WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst about new security measures for schools. She recently wrote about the subject at WRL.com. So before the break, you mentioned that metal detectors alone aren't going to stop guns from entering schools. And you mentioned a few other ways that schools are trying to keep them out. One school system in North Carolina is combining a few of those things, and uh, it sounds like it's starting to work for them. Yes. So in Charlotte and Mecklenburg schools, they have installed a weapons detection system, one of those AI-powered systems. They created uh, several student groups that were dedicated to ending violence, and they also started using an anonymous tip line about a year ago. And so they found, I believe the Charlotte Observer reported there were 23 guns on campus found last school year, and news reports have found three this year. Now, a couple school systems closer to home are trying something similar, right? Right. So uh, Johnston County Schools says they're going to use this AI-powered technology at all of their schools. Person County is going to start using this. 
Um, a couple of other counties have said they're thinking about it. They're taking surveys. I believe Granville County Schools is conducting a survey on expanding their metal detectors, which I believe are, are not used everywhere, are not used every day. Um, Harnett County Schools, uh, school officials um, have expressed an interest in doing something, and weapons detection is on the table for them as well. Do you see a time when uh, all school systems in the state or in the country will be using this kind of technology? The, so it's a, it's a growing technology, especially the AI-powered systems. They've really ramped up marketing of those systems, and there's an increase in concerns. So there's a possibility that we will see more. We're certainly seeing a growing interest in just in our area and in North Carolina. Um, but it's still extremely rare for schools to actually have these systems. Um, just a couple of school years ago, I believe this was in 2020, there was a federal survey, the most recent one conducted, found just a few percent of schools actually had metal detectors and used them on a daily basis. I think it was about 3%. And then maybe double that amount had metal detectors, but they didn't use them every day. So it, if it's growing, uh, it may not get to 100% anytime soon. What are lawmakers doing? So... North Carolina lawmakers have expanded funding for school safety efforts. Um, so we saw about a doubling in those funds, I believe $32 million in grants uh, during this fiscal year, and I believe it was maybe $15 million the year before that. Um, so schools are using those for a variety of things. In Wake County, they're doing a visitor management system, which is basi basically an electronic background check of people entering the schools. They've also increased funding for school resource officers. Um, there's some mixed opinions uh, among experts about how effective school resource officers are at stopping certain types of violence. Um, we know mass shootings have occurred in schools where school resource officers were working, um, but there are some experts who believe they can be an important part of the process in terms of vetting tips or creating relationships with students, but there still are you know, some students who maybe don't have a positive relationship with school resource officers. So there's some work to be done there. Do you think lawmakers will work more money into the upcoming budget? So I think there's a lot of interest and uh, lawmakers have, have said they're interested in expanding that. There's no budget proposals on the table yet, but I wouldn't be surprised to see more funding there. Well, I'm sure you'll be watching. Emily, thank you. Mm-hmm. That's WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst. For her in-depth article on school security efforts, visit the education section of WRL.com. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for listening to the WRL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at WRL.com slash newsletter. Leave a comment and share this video with your friends. With daily uploads, there will always be a conversation.